So chapter 17 is going to be about how your DNA is going to go from something that's just a bunch of A's, T's, G's, and C's, and then all of a sudden it turns into something physical, right? So if we were to look at your DNA, it's a long strand, and it's just made of nucleotides, and it's just going to be some sort of sequence. But what's crazy is that that sequence codes for all of the qualities that you have that make you up as an individual. So we're going to talk about the process that actually allows that to happen. Now this is a completely different process in Chapter 16. Chapter 16 was about um, replication, and that's completely different, right? That's just how DNA copies itself if you're doing mitosis or meiosis or something like that. So chapter 17, this one, is going to be about how we actually can make something physical from a DNA genetic code. So ribosomes are going to be used a lot for this, and it's made of a small subunit and a large subunit, and um, that's going to kind of be where everything is going to be happening. So um, right here, the thing that looks kind of like a hamburger bun, that's going to be your ribosome. You've got the large subunit and your small subunit. And um, what it's going to be creating is one type of RNA. So if you look here in the notes, it talks about the fact that there are three different types of RNA. You have ribosomal RNA, and that's going to be what actually composes your ribosomes. And then you're going to have transfer RNA, and the whole point of transfer RNA is it's going to be kind of like a little shuttle, and it's going to shuttle a specific amino acid over to a whole process we're going to talk about in a little bit. And then you've got messenger RNA, and messenger RNA is actually going to be a copy of your original DNA. So um, those are going to be the three types, and we'll talk about all three of those quite a bit in this chapter. So there's something called the central dogma, and that's just talking about how the whole relationship is between DNA and RNA and proteins. So the way it works is DNA is going to get transcribed into RNA, and RNA is going to get translated into proteins. So if we go back to this picture, sorry, I've got something in my eye. Um, this next one is actually really good to show you how this works. So the way I talk about this in class is think about your DNA like the original blueprints, <laughs> blueprints for a building. So um, if you have just one copy of those blueprints, you don't want to take those to the construction site, right? Because if you lose them or they get damaged, then you're in trouble, right? So um, what happens is, same idea, DNA is kind of trapped inside the nucleus here. And so what they're going to do is they're going to make a copy of it, just like you would with the blueprints. You would make a copy of the blueprints and take the copy to the work site. And so here, What's going to happen is the process of transcription is copying that DNA into RNA, which can leave the nucleus, okay? And that type of RNA is called messenger RNA. So then that messenger RNA is going to exit and go to the work site or the cytoplasm inside the cell, and then translation is going to happen. And so that's going to be the second part that we're going to talk about. So those are going to be the stages and the basic reason why that happens. So transcription happens in the nucleus, and that's DNA being transcribed into RNA, just a copy. And then RNA is going to leave the nucleus and go out to the cytoplasm, and that's where translation is going to happen, which is where the messenger RNA is actually going to be made into a protein. And we'll talk about that whole process and how that works in just a little bit. Okay. So, looking here, when we talk about an overview of transcription, um, it's a pretty basic process. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is there's going to be an enzyme called RNA polymerase. Now you've heard of polymerase before, right? That was in replication, but it was DNA polymerase. And the whole point of DNA polymerase was that it was going to create a complementary strand of DNA. So RNA polymerase, you can probably already guess, it's going to make a complementary strand of RNA. So it's going to bind to what's called a promoter site, and what's going to happen is that's going to be at the beginning of the gene. And then it's going to just move along the strand and make a complement to that DNA um, strand. And then when it gets to um, what's called a stop sequence, it's going to disengage, and now we've got our messenger RNA that can exit the um, nucleus. Um, so I have a little, oops, not there. <laughs> I have a little picture to kind of show this whole process happening. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is you've got your RNA polymerase, which is this kind of teardrop shape here, and it's going to bind to what's called a promoter region. And what it's going to do is then it's going to just keep going down the DNA 
and unwinding it. So it's kind of like a zipper, but as it's unzipping it, it's also creating a complementary strand. And so it's just going to keep going down. Same thing, it's going to create it in that five prime to three prime direction. And eventually it's going to get to that stop sequence at the end. Now we've got our completed RNA transcript, and now we can go on to translation. Okay, so transcription is pretty easy. It's just making a copy of stuff, so it's not super bad. Okay, now translation is going to be a little bit more involved. So um, we're going to come back to this overview, but um, right now we're going to just talk about some other details that will help the whole process to make a little bit more sense.